Hi guys! So, um, I did my first video a long time ago, like three months ago, maybe three and a half months before I came to Korea. And if you remember, I said I was going to make a video, like I was trying to do once a week or something. And um, yeah, that was three and a half months ago. And this is my second video. So I'm sorry that I haven't been consistent. Um, my semester's almost over, so hopefully after uh, I'll get more time to do more video blogs and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I guess I have a lot to catch you guys up on. Um, I got to Korea uh, beginning of September, and it was pretty cool. Um, the flight was so long. My last flight, I had three stops, and uh, my last flight was 13 hours which really sucked sitting in a plane for that long. But on the bright side, I had a layover in California that was 11 hours long. And I was kind of not looking forward to it because, you know, what am I gonna do for 11 hours? I wanted to sleep, but, you know, I had my laptop and I had my luggage and stuff like that and I didn't want to fall asleep, you know, God forbid someone stole my stuff or something. So my plan was to originally just sit and like stay awake, you know, maybe study, you know, hopefully just try to stay awake but um luckily right before I landed in California I overheard a woman uh, talking she was a few seats behind me saying that she was headed to Korea and I was like what like I'm headed to Korea like who else is headed to Korea not many people you're not gonna hear that you know so I was like dude I need to talk to this woman and um, at first I was getting a little shy because I was like oh I don't want to be a creep and like you know talk to her but then I was like wait no like, this is my chance. I need to make a friend. You know, she could help me. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to, like, get up from my seat in the plane and go over and talk to her. So I just waited till the plane landed in California, got my bags, whatever. Um, I waited outside, and I waited for her to come out, you know. Um, and I waited. When she came out, she had a little girl, too. And I was like, hey, so I heard you're headed to Korea. And she said yeah and I was like awesome that's where I'm going too and she's like sweet and then you know we just start talking about you know our husbands and the army and um, turns out she was already in Korea for a year before and she just went home for the summer and um, so I was like oh I'm so glad I met you you know now I have a friend that I can talk to because she had the same layover for 11 hours and uh, you know she's been through this you know her husband's been in the military for a few years and stuff like that and I'm brand new at this, so I was like so thankful that I met someone. And um, so she showed me the USO in the airport because I didn't know, I wasn't aware that they had a USO. I didn't even know what that was, and you know, because I'm so new to this. And she told me, and it's this really cool room where, like, for soldiers or dependents, you know, as long as you have your military ID, you're allowed in. You just sign in and stuff. And free, everything's free. You know, like if you want to give the workers there a tip, you know, you can, but technically they're volunteers. I think so, at least. I don't know. I don't think they get paid. I don't know. Don't take me on that. But, um, they, there's snacks, free snacks, coffee, uh, they serve you breakfast, you know, nothing like too extravaganza, but, you know, good enough. And it's free, like I said, so, you know. Um, and they have a room, like a, a it kind of looks like a big living room. They had couches everywhere big couches for you to lay on, uh, couches that had like the recliner seats, really comfy, not like cheap couches either, you know, like nice leather, but like soft couches, you know, um, they gave you cute little toothbrushes with the toothpaste tube that's like this big, like literally for one use, like overnight, but you know, they have a bunch of them, so they can give you if you're going to stay for longer than a night, but we were only there for one night, so that was good enough for me, and, um, you know, lotions, soap, body soap if you want to take a shower, um, bathroom, of course. They had a little library for books if you want to read in your free time. They had a big TV. Uh, they had gaming systems. They had an Xbox, PlayStation. Um, they had a nursery room with cribs, toys. You know, if you have kids. Well, she had a kid, so, you know, she went in there and stuff like that. Um, they had pillows, blankets, like, you name it, they had it, you know? So I was so glad that I uh, found that place 
because I wouldn't have known if I hadn't talked to her. And um, so we went there, and I got a good, decent, like, nine hours sleep, eight hours, like, perfect, what I needed, because I was so tired. And um, it was great. We woke up, we started a new day, we went to our plane, you know, whatever. We didn't have seats directly next to each other, you know, since we didn't know each other before when we were planning, but... She was still only a few rows behind me, you know, during the 13-hour plane ride. If I was ever bored or something and the plane was okay, you know, you can take out your seatbelt. I would just walk over, see what she's up to, you know. So it was really cool. And what's even greater is that I still talk to her till this day. Like, she was my first friend. Um, not my only friend. I have more friends now. But it's all been because of her because she led me to the... PWOC that I didn't know about either like I didn't know anything really coming into this like I didn't know anything so PWOC is the Protestant women of the chapel which they have it at every you know military base uh, and it's like little Bible study like a women's Bible study and um, it's a great way to like connect with people you know and it was a good thing that I needed because I wanted to do something because I was always stuck in the house and like I wasn't doing much you know just studying, but, you know, it was good to get to get out there and meet people, too, because I didn't know anybody, so I was like a little turtle in my shell, so I've met great people, I still talk to her, she's awesome, her name's Anna, um, she's awesome, really awesome, so I'm glad I met her, and, uh, it's Wednesday here in Korea, it's 1.20 p.m., in the States, it's 11.20 p.m., on the 3rd, oh by the way it's the 4th here already, so it's afternoon 4th, and over there it's almost bedtime, well depends time you go to bed, but yeah, 14 hour time difference, it took me a, a few days to get used to that too, I remember in the beginning I was sleeping all day, staying up all night, because my body wasn't used to it, so I'd just stay up studying, because I wasn't tired, you know, Sergio, my husband, he was already used to it. So he would be sleeping, and then I'd just be on the bed all night studying. And literally, I would stay up until he got up for work, which was about 5 o'clock. And um, when he left, it start, when I started kind of to get tired, and then I would sleep afterwards, like all day until he got home from work. So it was a crazy schedule. But then it took me a few days, and then I got used to it. It was cool. Um... We didn't have a place right away when we got here, so one of his battle buddies was nice enough to let us um, have a room in their house with his wife, so that was really nice of them, because if not, uh, we probably would have had to stay like in lodging or something on post, which you know you pay for, so they just saved us a bunch of money, and I'm really grateful for that, because um, the places here in Korea, the houses, they're really big, it's, you don't, there's no such thing as, like, a two-bedroom kind of thing. You know, like, that's all I need. All I really need is not even one bedroom. I mean, it's just me and Sergio. You know, we don't have kids or anything. So I was expecting that, and I was fine with it. You know, I was like, oh, it's our first place. No big deal. I'm okay with a little thing, you know. My parents' first place was a basement that they rented in Brooklyn. So it's kind of funny. So I was expecting something like that, which was fine. Because, you know, it's an adventure. But um, then, like... The smallest tier is three bedroom, two bath. And I was like, what? Okay, well, I mean, I don't need all this, but alrighty. So we were living with um, Sergio's friends for about a week. And then um, that weekend, when Sergio was free from work, we got with the realtor of the pl like that was referred to us from Sergio's friends. And, um,. She was really, really nice. She was awesome. She showed us a few places, and then we found the one we wanted. So we said, yes, we want this one. Uh, we met. Uh, again, we brought the realtor guy on post and signed the lease. Bada bing, bada boom, you know, all that stuff. And now here we are in our own place. I'm not going to give you a tour right now, but, I mean, I'm on the bed. This is <laughs> the bed piece, whatever. So, um... Yeah, it's really awesome. Uh, we expanded our family. Um, not not a baby, but um, we have two kittens, and we have one prairie dog. Which, if you listen, I mean, 
I think you can hear it. Do you hear a little shaking? Yeah, that's him. He's in a cage, like right out. There's like sliding glass doors, and there's a little back part. He's in a cage out there, and he just scratches at the cage all day, or just, uh, he makes noises whenever, like let's say I cough or sneeze, or even just breathe out of my nose or something. He'll make the noise that's like, it's like weird. And he kind of goes up on his feet. It's cute, it's cute. But um, yeah, everyone thinks it's funny that we have a prairie dog. It's kind of funny. I mean, I didn't think I was going to have a prairie dog, but kind of just happened. And here we are, prairie dog. So, yeah, we love them. Um, what else? Life here is great so far. Everyone thinks I'm a crazy woman when I say that, but I really love living here. I'm really happy here in Korea. Um, I love the food. Love the food. I love the people. They're so nice here. Really, like, I don't know why I had the impression that I was going to get here and maybe, you know, they weren't going to like Americans. You know, they're going to think that we're, I don't know, mean or something. Or I just thought that they were going to be rude to us and they were going to think that we didn't like them so they would be mean to us, you know? I don't know. I had that impression. But when I got here, it was the total, total opposite. Everyone is so sweet. They love children. You know, I don't have children, but when I've been with children, they love them. Like, they're so nice to them. They'll talk to them. You know, whatever few English words they know. Um, oh, they're amazed by blonde-haired, blue-eyed people. And children, too, of course. But it they just love them. Like, I posted on my Instagram, which... I guess I could be, like, if you guys want to follow me, I don't know if you guys follow me. I don't know if anyone random is watching this. I don't know, but I guess I'll just put it out there. People do that, right? I guess if you guys want to follow my Instagram, it's estervilla0422. So that's E-S-T-H-E-R-V-I-L-L-A-0422. Um... If I was cool and I knew what to do, I'd probably do like, you know how people like put that little link on the bottom where you're like, oh, click below if you want to, you know, I don't know. But I don't know how to do that yet, so I won't do that. But, um, yeah, I'm just talking about, I mean, you don't have to follow me. But, whatever, anyways, what was I talking about? Um, oh yeah, I posted on my Instagram one time that I went on a trip and there was this lady from, it was a trip with the PWC ladies. Well, technically it was a USO trip, but a lot of the PWC ladies went, um, she, there's this one lady, she has a daughter, like, she's only, I don't know, a few months old, and she is so cute, she has, um, blonde hair, blue eyes, and literally, she got stopped, like, three times by a bunch of, just a group of Koreans, like, every time, it was always a group of Koreans, and they would just say, hey, like, well, they say it differently, because they don't really know too many English words, but they, they would ask for pictures, or, like, a video, or something, and literally, I took a video of, like, this whole group of these Korean boys. I don't know if they just got out. Like, they look like high schoolers. And they were literally, like, just take selfies with the baby. Like, oh, hi, hey. And they just, boom, like, take pictures. Or they do a video. Or they did this one pose that was like this. I, oh, I guess that's a heart. <laughs> I didn't think about that. But, um, literally, like, she got stopped three times. And it was hilarious. I, I had heard stories about that. But I didn't know, like, I had never seen it. Uh, a lot of my other friends, too, they, like, they told me that their kids got offered modeling jobs here in Korea. Because I guess it's, like, really rare because Koreans don't have blonde hair, blue eyes. So when they see it, it's, like, a celebrity, basically. And they take pictures with them, and they think it's cool. And like I said, they offer the modeling jobs. One of the ladies, her daughter actually did one. Like, she went through with it. And it was cool. It was really, really cool. Um, so that's awesome. Um, kind of makes me jealous. They don't want pictures with me or something. <laughs> Just kidding. But it's cool. Um, I'm learning a lot about their culture. Just the little things. You know, I want to learn the language. Hopefully when the semester's over, I can, you know, take some time and actually, like, study it and learn it because it's pretty cool. I mean, I know the basics, obviously. Like, hi, bye, you know, please. I know right and left. Um, thank you. You know, all that stuff. But I want to learn it more now that I'm here, you know, take advantage. And, um, yeah, what else? I love, I love the living here, like the atmosphere, very city-like. Reminds me, like, uh, 
when I'm when I was in New York. It's just like that. All the people, the public transportation, the trains remind me of it. You know, the buses, the crowded cities, the lights. You know, going out at night. You know, not having to drive like ten minutes to go to a movies or you know, like I remember where I'm from. The only real cool thing that's near is the mall, which gets boring. The movie theaters, which also gets boring. And, I mean, it's kind of it. Like, it, I'm talking like a close proximity kind of thing, you know? If you want to do more stuff, you probably have to go more to, like, Tampa. And It's not that far, but it's more of a drive, you know? But here, like, you can just walk out and... There's just building after building or just like um, different stores, there's different restaurants, different everything, and it's like all close to each other, you know what I mean? So, you know, if you don't want this place, you go this place. If you don't want this place, you go this place. It's very like efficient kind of thing, so I really like that and it's cool. Um, the taxi drives, taxi rides are really fun because um, the drivers are a little crazy. And they don't really listen to rules. Rules for them are like just suggestions, you know. Red light. Oh, well, I should stop, but if it's clear, I'll go. You know what I mean? Like, they don't really take it that seriously. Stop signs. No. Um, speed bumps. No, don't have to slow down for that. Like, they're like, boop. It's, uh, it's really funny. It's kind of scary sometimes when it gets, like, really bad, like, for me, the worst is when they don't, um, you know when, when you're driving and, you know, you're supposed to stop a certain distance from the car in front of you, you know what I mean? They don't put their foot on the brake. You know, like, you slow down, like, when you're, you slowly brake, you don't just halt, like, you know, brake really fast. They don't slow down brake, so it's like, it appears that they're gonna literally hit the car, but they stop last minute, you know what I mean? And that's what scares me because, you know, you just have the reflex, like when you're in the passenger seat, of kind of like putting your foot down, even though there's no brake there, you know, you're on the passenger seat. But it kind of just happens, like you have, you just put your foot down. I do that a lot. So, it's funny. But, and some of them are singing, like they play, either they play American music or they play Korean music and they sing to it. Like, legit singing. So, those are my favorite when they sing because it's so funny. Um... But yeah, those are fun, but they raised the prices, which kind of sucks because it gets really expensive now and we don't have a car yet, so that's our only means of transportation. So yeah, um, but uh, yeah, what else, what else? I don't know if I should keep talking or stop because the video is getting long, but I just had a lot of ground to cover, I guess. I can end it here. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know how many follow. I mean, subscribers I have. I don't know if you guys are really paying attention to this, but if you wanna ask a question or something, you know, you can do that. You can comment, and I'll I can address it in the next video. I don't wanna make promises that I'm gonna do it next week because you know that didn't go too well last time. But if you like I said, if you want to ask me a question, go ahead. I'm new to this, so I don't even know what topics I should do. I don't know. But um, I'll think of something. I just babble anyway, so I'll just talk if you need to hear something. Or if you guys are just wanting to get an update, you know. I'll be doing that a lot, just updating you on my life. I kind of just updated you on three months worth. Mm, pretty cool. I mean, I didn't tell you everything, but I told you most of it, I guess. Most of the important stuff. And, uh, oh, what did I talk about Thanksgiving? Well, I had a good Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, Sergio and I, uh, it's funny because his uncle is actually stationed here in Korea too. Just in another base, but it's not too far from us. So it was cool, we visited his uncle. Not for Thanksgiving though, sorry. Um, I'm just thinking. It was like two days before Thanksgiving that we visited his uncle. And, um, but for Thanksgiving we went to... Sergio's co-worker's house um, A woman that I had met already. She was really cool. I like her a lot And so it was her and her husband. They're both they're dual military 
But, um, it was nice. It was a good time. We ate a lot of food. I met a lot of people. Uh, we played card games after. We, it was fun. It was fun. The guys did their thing. Women did our thing, you know. It was cool. I liked it a lot. And I'm so glad I met, like, made friends here. Because that was my biggest thing. Like, I was scared maybe I wasn't going to make friends. Because once you know me, I can be very talkative. And I, like, talk a lot. But sometimes I get shy. It depends the situation or, like, the atmosphere. But sometimes I get shy and I won't initiate conversation. I kind of, like, keep to myself. So it depends. And I had a fear that I was going to be like that when I got here. But... I'm not, which is good, and I've made a lot of friends here, and met a lot of people, a lot of great people, especially military wives, so I'm happy for that, and they've all made my experience here better, it's in some way or another, even if it was just something little, so, yeah, I guess I'll end it with that, just, I'm having a great time here in Korea, I really love it, I know I still have a long time before I leave, but whenever I think about leaving, I'm already sad. Because I guess, I don't know, I, it's just, you know, like, this is my first home, you know, with my husband as a married couple. So, you know, this place is always going to have a little bit of <laughs> a place in my heart, you know, I'm getting sentimental for a minute. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, I'm really happy here. I love the new culture. I love being overseas. We're definitely going to stay overseas, or that's the plan at least. Um definitely about that Oconus life. It's a military term. You can Google it if you don't know. <laughs> oh, that's another thing. All the acronyms. Oh, gosh. There's a lot of acronyms in the military. I like it because whenever I talk to someone who doesn't know, I kind of feel, you know, just a little bit cool because I know some things. But I had to do a lot of Googling myself. You know, I'm not going to lie. My husband will say some things and I'm like, I'll remember it. Sometimes I'll ask him, but sometimes I don't. I ask him too much, so I'm like, let me just store that in here, Google it later, and then I Google it, find out, and then I'll use it later on. Kind of impresses him, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah. You see, I just talk about the randomest things. But anyways, thank you guys for watching, for anyone who is watching. I'm sorry this is such a long video, I know. I know you probably hate me, you probably skipped through it or something, I'm sorry. Um, I guess I didn't. I don't mind, it's whatever, so. Um, I'll try not to make a long video next time, um, but I just talk a lot, and I'm a woman, that's what we do. <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, so, I'll shut up now, so. Thank you for watching, uh, questions, if you have any, let me know, and, um, hope you guys have a good day, or night, whenever you're watching this, whatever time of day it is, and, yeah, alright, bye!